Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> my name is uh, Elder Valeria Coley. I am. Um, I come on actually every week, every Tuesday, seven thirty Eastern Standard Time, to continue to cover our children in prayer. Um, I, I can honestly say that the Lord continues to be kind. The Lord continues to be kind. And for many, for many, um, a lot of people don't understand what that means. Happy Tuesday. Um, um, but if you're able to look at this live or, or if you're able to Look at the replay. You have to know that the Lord has been kind. Um, chaos is, is happening in the earth. And usually when there's chaos, <laughs> God continues to show who he is. Um, Again, I you know, um, I was I was sitting thinking about some things that were shared with me earlier by my brother, um, and I, I actually spoke with um, a young man who I, that I consider to be a spiritual guide um, <clears throat> in my walk, and it's if you don't understand what's going on, I'm gonna try to help you tonight. Um, God uses chaos. God uses chaos to to get people's attention. Um, we've seen and heard so many different things pertaining to this coronavirus and everything that it, that 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 it has affected in our everyday life. <clears throat> and one thing um, that the Lord and it was, it's an old saying. This is, this is what's crazy. It's an old saying, but the Lord reminded me of it today. And I, my grandmom and them used to tell me this on a regular basis. And the Lord reminded me of the phrase, a hard head makes us soft behind. And when I know what it meant, and it's like when you, when, when, when I was coming up, when I didn't listen, I suffered the consequences of my of my actions. Um, if you don't listen, you suffer the consequences of your action, good, bad, or indifferent. And and in this day and time, that's what I believe the Lord is showing His children. Um, that we we have been um, stubborn, abstinent. We've been hard headed. We have done everything that we wanted to do, try to do, and every time we get in trouble, or every time there's a a, a chaos that's sent to the earth, um, a lot of us will run and we'll cry and we'll ask the Lord to forgive us, and we do it long enough to feel like we have been forgiven. And then we go right back doing what we were doing before the chaos comes. And me being a parent, I had to learn how to let my children figure stuff out. Um, as much as I wanted to be um, um, savior, um, didn't want to let, didn't want them to um, go through things that I went through. Um, but they suffer the consequences of their actions. Some things they learned from and some things they did not. But it did not um, change my love for them because they were my children. And this is, this is what I believe God is doing with us as his children. Even though you go in there doing what you want to do, saying what you want to say, how, acting how you want to act, and I'm trying to get your attention and let you know that you need to change, you need to repent, 
You need to come back to me and you need to come back to me because I love you. God is reaching out to us because he loves us. Any, anytime you, you've heard of the phrase tough love, you've heard of the phrase, um, um, you know, children just going out there and just doing whatever you, you cannot, you cannot, um, ignore the fact you cannot ignore the fact that with all that is going on, that God is still good and he's worthy of a praise. You cannot ignore the fact of that. And, and we, as his children have to, because if we don't, we're going to literally be, be left behind. Our, we, his children, our brothers and sisters eternal, we have to understand that there are things that we have done, still doing, that God is not pleased with. And he uses these type of, these type of episodes with the coronavirus, with the bird flu, Zika, and I said a lot, about, a lot about that last week. He's using all of these things, trying to get our attention that we can focus on him because he's waiting for us to come back to him. He's, how simple can that be? If you, he's, he's, he's told us in so many different ways, if you keep on doing what you're doing, you're going to catch it. If you keep on acting like you acting, you're going to catch it. And you're doing stuff that you know that I have already said that is wrong in my eyes. My, my grandmother, I'm, I'm so glad that <laughs> I'm so glad that I have. I had the opportunity to have a grandmother like mine. My grandmother showed me a lot of things opposed to telling me a lot of things. And I still live by it to this day. Um, my grandmother took me to church. Um, I used to see my grandmother sit on the side of the bed and read her Bible. And my grandmother, I, I don't know, I don't know what grade my grandmother went to when she was a child, but she didn't graduate from high school. I don't even think she got to middle school. Um, but I used to see her do different things to show me how to, how to be a better person, how to be a, a, a good citizen or good asset to society. There is nothing that I learned from her that I would change. Nothing. There's, there's still some things she has, she told me before she died that I wish I had to listen to because I would have been better in, 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 in one area or another. Um, a hard head make a soft behind. What, what will it take for us, the children of God, to do right by, by him? What would it take? What, what would it take for us to understand that God is a God? He does not change. He's the same today yesterday and forevermore he's the same if he don't change and and the word says that he is his word that means his word doesn't change so who are we to change it to be comfortable in a place that he created for us to live in to give him glory while we are here who who are we to change it and i and i'm and i actually made that analogy last week about how, how dare you, if I give you my car, I'm saying one of my children, excuse me, I dare you go and change the color of my car without my permission. We, we, have, we, have, we have accepted and we have allowed things to happen that we know are wrong. And we have participated, all of us, everybody, we have participated and those things that we know are wrong according to the word of God. And, but yet and still, we don't make that effort to repent. We don't make that effort to change, turn away from, um, for, for, and, and I'm having a transparent moment and I don't care who know it. And anybody know me, they, they, they should, 
they should know I don't have no cut card. If you, I have, I still, I still struggle with cussing. I do. I do. I have, I have, Peter is my brother. I have a, I have, I have a struggle, especially when you make me mad. Especially when you make me mad. My, my tongue needs to be tamed because I don't, I don't like when, when people put me in that position. So with that being said, when I was praying this morning, the Lord had me say out of my mouth his word and it simply said that bitter and sweet water cannot come out the same fountain. He was saying that to me. He was saying that to me. And I and I was I was I actually I was I was up pretty much all night. I didn't fall asleep this morning till after six. I was up all night. And I fell asleep praying bitter and sweet water cannot come out of the same fountain. Bitter and sweet water cannot come. It's in it's in the Bible. I see if I can find it for you before I get off. Bitter. And sweet water cannot come out the same fountain. So with that being said, with us being shut in, we can't, you know, literally go anywhere except to do essential things, you know, like going to the store or going to get medicine or whatever the case may be. He has us closed in and he has us closed in because he's trying again, he's trying to get 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 our attention. There, there are some things so, that are real simple to understand, um, but, but because we have been distracted so long with the ways of the world and with the ways of our own stubbornness and the ways of our own intellect that we don't think that God is serious about what he is saying. And that's why I said to you all when I first came on that contrary to what you believe, God is kind. He is kind and gracious to us. Um, I, I, I'm one of those people. I wish that I can get, just get everybody in, in, one, in, one, in one place and just tell them that God, he loves you, but you got to change. He loves you, but you got to change. You got, and you got to change because he's waiting for you to come back to him because he has purpose for us. Not only is eternal life our portion, but he has purpose for us because before he comes back to get us, there are still people that are that that live here on earth that that we have been our voice have been assigned to. And because we we doing what we doing, we can't even get to him because we distracted with whatever we doing. And what what, what we doing has nothing to do with promoting and illuminating the glory of God in the earth it has nothing to do with that. Nothing. So when you deal with your child, you know how you deal with your child to get your child's attention. And sometimes the way that you deal with your child, they, you don't get their attention right away, but there's, there's, you always got an ace in a hole that, okay, that didn't work. This didn't work. Okay. I got, I know this will work. And it's, and it's like God doing the same thing. He know what will work for us to get ourselves together. He know, and I'm still talking about our children because our children pay attention to what we do. And we are the children of God. I'm not off my, I'm not off my mandate. It, it just, it, 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 it bothers me. It bothers me because I struggle on a regular basis. Me, I struggle on a regular basis trying to maintain the word that I already know. And 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 when I when I get it, oh man, I'm I'm um I'm yeah, I'm getting it. And I'm happy I'm getting it because when I get it, that means God is pleased with me. That means the one that created everything that we see, he's pleased with me. Valeria, he's pleased with me. And we as children, 
we 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 want to do everything we could possibly do to please our parents. We want we want our parents to be proud of us. We wanted our parents to love us and we didn't some 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 of us had two parent households. Everything was fine, well and dandy. You grew up and and you know and then some of us didn't have that. But it did not minimize the love of the parent for the child because we only had one parent in the household. And then you had, you may have had some people who had both parents in the household, but the house was dysfunctional for whatever reason. All I'm saying to you, y'all, and it's real simple, turn back to God before it's too late. Turn back to God before it's too late. There's, there is nothing... Thank you, um, thank you, husband. Thank you, Pastor Jackie. Um, turn back to God before it's too late. I, I get want to do things and hang out, and but when you when you sit there and you think about it, what are you what are you hanging out for? Are you hanging out to to bring somebody to Christ? Or are you hanging out because that's just like like that's just what you want to do, and you relaxed and all the above. And again, I, I mean, I can go down the line about, you know, hanging out on the street. I can do all that. But what I'm saying to you as, as a child of God, and if you are not a child of God, the Bible says, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And Romans 10, 13 says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Those for those, that's for those who have not accepted Christ. If you call in his name Jesus from your heart and the sincerity of your heart, the Bible says that he will save you. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God the Father raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for whosoever shall believe in him, Jesus Christ, should not perish but have everlasting life. Come back to God while we can come back. Come back. He, he's, waiting, he's waiting on the return. The return of us. I was talking to, I was talking to one of my spiritual guys today and one of the things that, you know, he was saying about, you know, the chaos and all these things is that some things have to happen. They have to happen so people can pay attention. But if you if you don't if you don't take the time to 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 establish a relationship with God, you'll miss the sign. And the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy the enemy is 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 a master deceiver but god but god himself god himself says if it were possible if it were possible the very elect of god would be fooled but it's not possible because we belong to him and and we have there is safety in christ there is there is there is there is there's a paradise in Christ. A paradise we've never experienced before. I wish I wish even even me being um I'm I'm 55 years old and I and I I would I would love to see my my biological father one time. My father died when I was 4. The only thing I remember about my daddy is riding down the street on the back of a garbage truck because he was out he was our local garbage man and the second one was seeing him laying in the casket. I would love to to see him alive and him look at me and see the expression on his face when he look at me. But I'll never have that chance because my daddy is gone. But think about what happens when God look at us, the expression on his face when he sees us? And I'm not talking about everybody. 
I'm talking about the, those of us who did, who are determined, who are determined to not do what God says is right in his eyes. We broke down, we broke up, we jacked up, we tow up, and we, we all these things because we don't want to do right by God. A hard head make a soft behind. Our actions make, make our life harder than what it has to be. How, how, how amazing is it that you, you wake up in the morning and you see a cloud over your dwelling place and you notice the creator of, of heaven and earth. How amazing would it be that when you lay down to go to sleep at night, you see a cloud of fire over your dwelling place. How, how amazing is that? And we, we've taken advantage of those things that God has blessed us with. And all he's asking from us, the one who uh, has accepted him as their Lord and Savior, is to come back to me because I'm waiting for you. But the, the kicker is, is not, I'm not going to wait forever. You have to make that decision now. It's just like our children. If you have a child that's out there slinking, doing drugs, or whatever the case may be, or lock, if they don't, if they don't change their ways, they're gonna either get killed or locked up. What what is that? Same. It it the the principle is still the same. He's waiting for us to come back to him. He waiting for us to come back to him. Please come back while we got time. Corona ain't got nothing on Jesus at all. By his stripes, we are already healed. And if there's any sick among you, call on the elders of the church and they will anoint you with oil and pray for you and you will be healed. I'm talking to the body of Christ. That's why I said you don't have no, you don't have no time and no room to be afraid. God has not given us a spirit of fear. You have, to, you have to learn how to live on the word that you already know and use it for the glory of God and for your benefit and for your safety while you are here on earth. That's it. So you, I, I, I see so many people, I've, and I've, seen, I've seen preachers and I've, seen, I've heard so many people talk about this thing and you know, they, they give their, what their perception is, and that's okay because that's their perception. If if it's going to help us come back to God, yes, I'm all for it. Yes. Yes. But you have to remember, just as the devil presented to Jesus when he was um, the, the when he was in the wilderness and he and the devil told him that if you get if you worship me i'll give you this how is it that the, the devil think he can give something to the one who who already has it we are distracted by the pride of life the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh the body of christ we are we are we are distracted by the pride of life the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh and and the enemy is using that to keep us away from the one who he once called. <laughs> who he once called father. And I, I am so careful to say. I am so careful to say. That. God does not hate the devil. Just me talking. I'm careful to say. That God does not hate the devil. God hates what the devil is doing because the devil himself was in the presence of God on a regular basis, making music unto him. The Bible says in Ezekiel, he went up and down a mountain and he had pipes in his body. And as he go up and down the mountain, the music came out and it was acceptable unto God. 
but it wasn't until pride. God saw pride, found pride in the in, in Lucifer. And that's when he became to he became the devil. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Come back to Christ while you can. Get your get yourself right while you can. Hey, Shamar. Get yourself right while you can. He 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 loves us so much. God is simple. God loves us so much that with everything that we have done that we know ain't right, he still he still reaches his hand out to us and says, Come on, I'm waiting for you. 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 And 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 the, the, again, the only example I can give when it comes to that is with me and my children. I did not agree with everything that my children did and still don't in some instances. But they know I love them. And, and, and I, I got their back. They know that. I might raise some sand in the midst of it, but they, gonna know I'm a, they know that I'm there. And in my own way, I'm there. When they want to talk, I'm there. When they don't want to talk, I'm there. So if, if, if I do that with my children, what do you think God does with us? And I, I, am, I am nowhere near remotely close to God him who, who, who created all things. And he loves me so that when he, when he loves me, he loves me unconditional. I, I, I only know a little bit of that. Because there are some parents who literally hate their children, literally hate their children for whatever reason. But God loves us unconditionally. He loves us unconditionally and he still, con he continues to extend his hand, hand of mercy, hand of grace. He continues to extend. And I've heard so many prophecies and I've heard so many say different things. All I'm saying to you is that you better get yourself together before he returns because the Bible says that he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. You need to figure out what your spot is if you got one and where your wrinkle is so it can, you can iron it out. That's what you need to do because if you don't, you're going to get left behind. It, do you know how do you know how how scary that could be? Because I I am convinced, me personally, I am convinced that there are still a whole lot of people that do not believe God is going to return. And they say they're Christians. They don't believe God coming back, at least no no time soon. They, and then there's some that just don't believe he coming back. It's just a myth, quote unquote. They don't believe that because he ain't came back with all, with all that's going on. They just don't believe that. Don't don't get fooled. Don't get fooled. The the enemy is a master deceiver. Don't get fooled. He coming back. The Bible says he'll crack the eastern sky. And those that will that are sleeping, meaning those that, that are dead, dead in him, they're going to rise first. And those that remain shall be caught up with him in the air. And John said, I knew I saw New Jerusalem and, and the God that we serve, the God that we have accepted, the God that we say we love, the God that we, we know to be the one that sits on the center of the earth. The Bible says that. He will do well amongst his people and he will be our God and we will be his children. That's what the Bible says. I think it's in Thessalonians. One part is in Thessalonians. I can just quote it. Another part is in Revelation. Please, please, please repent. Turn back. God supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory by his son, Christ Jesus.
You ain't the only one that's trying to figure out how they're gonna pay their bills. I I told I told my son-in-law yesterday, no today. I told my son-in-law, I said, had I seen this coming? And it's not that God may have been trying to show us that this was coming. But had I seen this coming, I would have been saving money last year. Just to make sure that we didn't have to be going. But I'm not worried. By no means, I'm not worried. But there are people who are literally worried and scared. There are people who are literally not able to go to work. And because they're not able to go to work, their employer some won't pay them and some cannot pay them. And they're worried, they're concerned. And then the government, they kick in and say, okay, we'll give you deferment on your car note. We'll give you deferment on your car insurance. We'll give you deferment on your rent or your house mortgage and all that stuff. And I mean, that's, that's, that's a temporary relief. But when you're in Christ, when you're in Christ, you, you shouldn't be worried about a thing. Because the Bible says that when we put our trust in Christ, we will never be ashamed. We will never be ashamed of trusting the one that died on Calvary's cross that we may have the gift of life. That's how confident he is. And he is the one that is waiting for us to come back. So... Do your own soul searching. Um, and you need to search your own soul. And all of us need prayer. All of us. I promise you, all of us need prayer. All of us. And we got to pray for one another. Please pray for one another. I love you all so much. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for yet another day. I thank you for the blessing of this day. God, you have, you have made it so clear to so many of us. And then there are some of us who still don't understand what's going on, but God, we, we know that all things are working together for the good of them that love you and who are the call according to your purpose. God, we believe that there is no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. We believe, Lord God, that you are God and beside you there is no other. We believe, oh God, that you are the God that sits on the center of the earth. We believe that you are the God that Ezekiel saw a will in the middle of the wheel. We believe that you are the God that fed Elijah and Elisha. We believe that you are the God that used Moses to bring Israel out of Egypt. We believe, God, that you are who you say you are. And I pray, God, now in Jesus' name that you would touch the hearts of your people, that, God, we, all of us, whatever is wrong in our hearts and heart, wrong in our minds, oh, God, that you would make us aware of those things and that we would turn, we will repent, we will stop doing. If we cussing too much or cussing, period, help us not to do it. If we lying, stealing, help us not to do it because all those things are contrary to your word. Help us, Lord God, to be better. Help us to love each other as you love us. Help us, Lord God, not to judge each other, but Lord, that we just pray for one another. There are some things, Lord God, that we see and we know, God, that is not right and we have our opinion. Help us, Lord God, to take help us, Lord God, to take our opinion to you and not to each other. Because some people are not as, as strong to handle those things that we are saying. And I'm praying and asking you, God, that you will help us be better. Help us to look out for one another. Help us, Lord God, to watch out for our children. These children, they're out of school. These graduations have been canceled. People have made preparations for whatever reason. There are people who have spent money and, and they won't get their money back because of the situation. But I'm praying and asking you now, God, that in the midst of all this chaos, that they will find you. They will find strength in you. They will find, find strength in you knowing that you are the God that sees and knows all things. It is my prayer, O oh God, that, the, that you, God, will, will keep us and watch over us and protect us. It is my prayer, O oh God, that you, your people will learn how to bless you because you have blessed us with so many different things. 
You bless us with health and with strength. You bless us with a sound mind. You bless us, Lord God, to have the activities of our limbs. You bless us, Lord God, even, even though we don't see without glasses, but we still can see, we can, still can smell, we still can talk, we still can taste, we still can hear. You bless us with those things that we take for granted. And I'm asking you, Lord God, that you would help us to learn how to bless you because you have blessed us so already. I pray, God, for those who are in leadership in our governments, in Jesus' name. You, you know what's happening. You know what's going on. And you're using all of this for your glory. Cover our children, those children that are home and they don't have nothing to eat. I thank you, Lord God, that for those schools who are still open, that they can at least get breakfast and lunch at least once a day. I pray and ask you now, God, that you would cover the health workers that are in the hospitals, that you would keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, that they will practice what they were taught in all these medical schools. Lord, I already know. I believe that there's a cure. But I understand that all this is working together for the good. All of this is working together for the good. And everything that you sent out will not return into you, Lord, but it will accomplish its purpose. Watch over the children of those health workers as they go to work and they, they, are, they, they be exposed to so many different things. I pray and ask you now, God, that you will cover the children in Jesus' name. God, I pray, God, that you will shut down anyone who feels like they can take the opportunity to try to mishandle and misuse and try to hurt or damage our children because their parents have to work and they have to find a babysitter. God, I pray for protection. I pray, God, that you send strong angels around them now in the name of Jesus. Those that's working in the grocery stores, those that's working in the gas stations, Bless them and cover them now in Jesus name. Those that's working in the drug stores, I, mm, they got to go to get prescription for somebody. God, I pray God that you will cover them now in Jesus name. You are well able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we could ever ask or think. You are well able God. And we thank you for this moment to come to your throne boldly because we really do know that you are God and besides you, there really is no other. We thank you that you are turning lives back to you. You are turning lives around and they are facing the right way because you are the way, the truth and the life. No man can come unto the father, but by you. I pray for every apostle, I pray for every pastor. I pray for every prophet, evangelist, and teacher. I pray for every bishop, every overseer, every deacon, deaconess, prophetess. All those things that have been listed, all those titles that have been listed in your word, I pray for them now. I pray, God, that they will seek after you with their whole heart and with their whole mind. And that they need to repent if there's anything that is not like you, God, that they will repent and turn back to you with a humble spirit. A humble spirit. A humble spirit. Because you give grace to the humble. Help us, God, to be humble. Help us, oh God, all of us to be humble because we are your children. God, you know who you have marked. You know who you have marked to be your children. And I pray and ask you now, God, that they will turn back to you now in Jesus' name. That they will turn away from the enemy and they will turn back to you, our Father. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. <laughs> to touch and agree. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity just to share and encourage your people because, God, I know you could use anybody else. And God, I thank you for a spirit of obedience 
Because God, I do understand what it's like to struggle with flesh, wanting to do what you want us to do, wanting to do what you want me to do, wanting to say what you want me to say. And the enemy fights tooth and nail. But God, your word says greater is you that's in me than he that's in the world, God. And I thank you for being greater in me. I thank you, Lord God, that you are teaching us all how to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. I thank you, Lord God, that we are learning to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Because when we walk after your spirit, we're walking in life, the life that you gave us, the life that you died for us to have. But when we walk in flesh, we walk in death. And you told us, Lord God, that we have to crucify our flesh, just as your flesh was crucified on the cross. And God, I thank you. I thank you for being the example that we need. And I ask you, Lord God, to forgive us all for taking advantage of your grace and your mercy and your loving kindness towards us. I ask you, Lord, to forgive us in Jesus name. Please, Lord, forgive us. And Lord, we're going to do better. We got to do better because you did not create, create hell for us. You created a paradise for us. And for that, God, I am grateful and I thank you. I thank you and I thank you. Silver, green, I, I, don't, I don't know why your name coming up in my head, but I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you and watch over you. Bless your husband and your children now in the name of Jesus. Bless your mama, Miss Margaret Green. Bless her now. Bless your brothers and your sisters now in Jesus' name. There's nothing to worry about. God is greater. God is greater. Lord, I thank you and I'm grateful and I love you it's in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. God is wonderful. God is God is wonderful. God is wonderful. Turn back to him. Turn back to him while you have the opportunity to turn back. Because when it's too late, it's too late. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. While he may be found. That means it's going to come a time he's not going to be available. He won't be found. He'll cut himself off because we didn't want to turn to him when he gave us opportunity. Learn how to read your Bible more. Learn how to talk to God more. Learn how to confide in him more. And when you do all those three, when you learn how to do all three of those things, the love will come easy for him. I'm telling you what I know. The love for him will come so easy. It will come so easy. I wish it was it was something else more I could say to to you to to get you to understand how precious this time is and how um, this time is, 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 um, is an emergency. It's, it's, it's of an urgency that we're living in now. Everybody's not going to heaven, unfortunately. Everybody not, they're not going to accept Christ, unfortunately. The Bible says that that hell enlarges itself because there are more people going to go than I guess they thought would go in before. I don't know. I um, you know I'm not a theologian to that level. I don't know. But the Bible says that the the that hell will enlarge itself. Shoel. So. Yeah, every day, falling in love with Jesus, that's it. Um, I see Pastor Jackie on here. Pastor Jackie, you, you know, you might, you might rather die when it comes to this praying thing. So you keep me lifted, please, because it's, I think what a lot of people don't understand with me, and again, I have no problem with being transparent. I think what a lot of people don't understand with me is that, um, when I say I'm all in, 
I'm serious. I'm all in. Because I have nothing. Me personally, I have nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. And and it would be it would be such a uh, a disgrace if I if I sit here and I share with you what the Lord shares with me, just try to encourage you and, and just try to get you to draw closer to him and I go to hell. That's my, what is that? That's not gonna happen. No. I love God too much. I love I when I tell you I love God, I love God too much. With my struggling cussing self, I still love God. I love God too much. And 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 I I I just need all of us to understand just how important it is. I'm telling you, you we got to get ourselves together. The church people. The church folk. We have to get ourselves together. It ain't about building no church building because we the building. It ain't about none of that. It's about growing your relationship with Christ. Because the Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away. But his word will always be here. So if you stress out building the church, it's not going to be here forever. Because we're the church. We're the, we're the bride of Christ. We got a wedding to go to. You got to be ready for the wedding. We the bride. We have to be ready to marry our husband. Read your Bible. It's in your Bible. We have to be ready to marry our husband. Jesus is the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. We have to be ready to get married. And we're going to be married forever. And he, and, he still, and he still takes care of us. He still watch over us. We'll, we'll be able to witness stuff that we've never seen before. Seeing angels all the time. Being able to look at the God that created heaven and earth with our own eyes. We have a brand new body, right? So I'm just saying it, it, would, be, it would be a disgrace to go through life perpetrating the fraud that you, that you love God and you accepted God and still end up going to hell. That's, that's crazy. It's just crazy. He loves us too much and he's still extending his hand. So keep that in mind as you go throughout your day. Keep that in mind while you <laughs> quarantined. He's, he's, he's got us shut in because he wants us to look up and talk to him. Do that. What a day of rejoicing. Yeah. Yeah, to be in the presence of the almighty God. Jehovah is his name. That's his name, Jehovah. And he sent his son, Jesus, that we would have that opportunity. I love y'all so much. I do. I don't say that just to be saying that because, you know, there's some people I can't say I love them. I'm just being honest. But I love y'all so much because God loves me and and you all pray for me because when I deal with stuff like that, me personally, when I deal with stuff like that, I have to remind um, myself that God died for everybody. That means that person that I can't say I love when I know that I, I should because God loves me. I have to remind myself more than, I, than you think that God loved. He died for them too. So if he died for them too, that means he loves them just the same. I love you. God bless you. I hope to see you um, next week. Lord willing, um, keep praying for each other.